So what we really want to do is make sure that you understand the problem that we're trying to solve. And as the person who's trying to build something for Moses, that's exactly what I need to do. I need to have a conversa conversation with him to understand what is it that he has and what is it that he needs to do with it. So the conversation might go something like this. Moses, yes. welcome to the studio. Yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> You need to speak louder because I okay. have the microphone uh, okay. here. Okay. okay. So I understand that you have a bunch of data and you would like to make a little bit more rigorous data database out of it. Right now, as I understand it, you have a bunch of data in different Excel spreadsheets. Yes. And these data are basically occurrence data for plants in Cameroon yes. uh, based on your research. Mm -hmm. Okay. So We've had a discussion about this before, and I understand also that not all of the data are in the same format. In other words, not all the spreadsheets look the same, mm -hmm. and they have different sources. Yes. So can you describe first basically what you were trying to do with those data? Why, why you have all these different spreadsheets? Where did it come from? Yeah. Um, initially, I, I started my botanical career, started my botanical career in uh, 1997, and I started my botanical career in 1997, and by, by 2000, I, I started collecting from Sangi M001, and... Um, That's a collector number? Yeah, my, collection, my first collection number, Sangi M001, and by 2003, I realized that, oh, my collection number, I'm moving right, I'm moving to volume, volume five of the exercise book that I'm using. And I was afraid that I can, I can lose my data. So I started entering this data in Excel. So uh, before that, I discussed it with Duncan Thomas. So he gave me some Excel fields. So I started filling the, the data uh, into it. And I, I named that collection one. That was before 2003. And um, in 2004, I said, oh, I have to go back to school. So when I came out of school three years after, I had two months of being idle. And I just um, realized that I have to continue entering my, my, my data because I didn't want to get rid of my field, of my field notebook. So that is that one now, I named it Collection 2. And a few years after, I, I started working on a group of plants called the Tesmiesi. So, and at one point I realized that the revision of this plan has not been done. So I now, with my own collection, I started entering that data in a different spreadsheet. And I named it the Tesmiesi spreadsheet. And at one point I realized that um, this group of plan, studies on this group of plants started since 19, 04, and most of the journals were, were written in, in German. And I, want, I was looking for a way so that people of present time could actually get access to such information. So, but how do I go about it? I now, with my, with collaboration with my friend, a German friend, Dr. Tassilo Frankel, he now translated the German version to English that I could use. That's why I, I like pull out information from from this uh, publication into a table form. So and you, that becomes you have a data form. coming out of the literature and going into your, your spreadsheet? Yes, and data also that are, is collected by me from, from the field. Mm -hmm. uh, of the same species in the same spreadsheet? No, no, of, of the, same, the same family. Because Tesmiesi, formerly Tesmiesi it, it, it was under uh, Bomaniesi. But in, in, 19, in 2008, uh, Vincent Mark did the phylogeny of Bomaniesi and, and said, oh, Afrotesmia oxygeni is not in Bomaniesi. So now I took the advantage now and said, OK, I'll, do, I'll, 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 I'll study the Tesmiesi, which now is made up of two genera, mm -hmm. Afrotesmia and um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oxygeny. Okay, and that data set that you have in your spreadsheet is a combination of literature data and your data. Yes. Right? Okay. Mm -hmm. Interesting. 
Yeah. But all of it is about occurrences, where they were found. Yes. Okay, good. And do you have any other data sets? Um, okay. <clears throat> my my, my uh, boss and my mentor happened to, to work in Missouri Botanic Garden at one point. Um, while he was doing his collection in Cameroon, he w took all the specimens to Missouri Botanic Garden. And then after... Then after, he, he like photocopy um, 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 mounted specimen from Missouri Botanic Garden. I'm sure he had the idea that if he photocopy this, it will actually ease his field assistant in Cameroon. So, it, I mean, it was, it's a huge set of data. So, um, three years ago, I stumbled into this data, and after the course in, uh, after the course in, uh, in Kenya, I realized that, hey, this is valuable information that uh, uh, people are like losing here. So I started entering this data. Then, three weeks ago, town happened to send me the data for Cameroon from GBIF. And I realized that the data for Cameroon GBIF is up till 1950. I said, oh, this is outdated information. With this now, uh, we could have recent data for, from the 80s to, to 95. That is how I now use the, 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 the various column from the data of GB to enter this recent data now from Missouri Botanic Garden. Okay. So that's a slightly different set of data because you're not actually generating anything original in that case if they were already published. Yes. And we since have come to learn that the data from GBIF do exist after 1950. You can download them but the files that you had from before only went up to 1950. Yes. So that problem is solved. We, we want to look to see what data there are for Cameroon throughout GBIF. Okay. It's probably better than it was before. Okay. Okay. And then there was something about photographs as well. Okay. What do you have? Yeah, I, I have a, a whole bunch of photographs uh, because in, in each expedition I take a lot of photos. So um, when I heard of this course, when I heard of this of this course, I, I realized that oh, at one point I've been looking for a way to to make my my photo uh, my, 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 uh, um, data being published, and I didn't know how to go about it. So I I just feel that this this would be a good opportunity to learn how I can get my photograph directly from the field, correlate them with with field data and make it available for the public. Mm -hmm. So overall your goal is to take your primary data mm -hmm. that you have, yes. combine it with these other data sources that are of interest to you, yes. and publish everything from there that is new. Sure. To GF. Yeah. yeah. Using Darwin Core. Mm -hmm. But but I I I will not dare to to, to publish the data from Missouri Botanic Garden catalog because I am 90% sure that that particular data has been published either in Tropicos or somewhere. So right. I, will, I, will, I, will, I will not want to do like a duplicate of it. Right. I will, I will but, like you, but you do still want those data available in your database. Yes. It's useful for you. For it's, your it's useful for me. It's useful for, for, for members of, of our institution. It's useful for students, they can use it for practice, but I will not dare to publish it because it will be like duplicating information on the web. Okay, so ideally what we would like is to create a single database for you that contains all that information in as simple a form as possible that still allows you to publish the non-Missouri Botanical Garden information to GBIF. Sure, okay. that would be good. Okay, mm -hmm. that sounds good. Okay. Um, first we should look at the data. Okay. And get an idea of what needs to be done. All right. So I've done that, a little bit of that. Let me take this mm -hmm. and I'll display on the screen what I have learned okay. about your data. And then I probably will ask you some questions. Okay. Okay. With him. So what I did, first of all, I had asked some of these questions of Moses before and realized what we want is to publish a simple Darwin Core data set to GBIF. Okay, and to do so, I took advantage of a resource that already exists in 
the Darwin Core Project website. And that is a, a Microsoft Access database with a single table of simple Darwin Core already built for me. So I, will, I went to that site and I grabbed it. This is the Darwin Core Project website. In the downloads section, if we have internet, In the download section, there is a file. Right here, can you see that? The one on the bottom right here. Simple DWC MS Access 2013-10-22. So this uses the latest version of the Darwin Core Standard and builds a Microsoft Access database from it. I already downloaded that, so I'm not going to do it again. And in fact, I used it to build a new database. I gave it a new name called Senge. And then I used that database. I'm not showing you all the steps I've gone through already. I, I want to save some time. I used that database to actually go out and link to the original data sources that Moses had given me. All of these are Excel spreadsheets. The little arrow there means it's a link to it. The data come from the spreadsheet directly. Okay? And in addition, I have my simple Darwin core table down at the bottom. This is the one that came from the website. This is the one that I built the database around to begin with. So that eventually will be a destination for these data that we'll try to publish to GBIF. So, Moses had mentioned his collection data. Here are the data from the spreadsheet for collection one. It's one of the worksheets in one of the Microsoft Excel spreadsheets. And these are the data. And you can see that, that he's got columns for plenty of different recognizable fields from the Darwin Core. Not all of them have the same names, but I think with the author, we should be able to reconcile them fairly easily. Looking through the data just quickly, I can see that we have an issue in a collection date column. We're not able to interpret some of the values here. So that's something we'll have to fix before we get too much further. Let me just scan to the right and have a look at other things. I see no particular problems beyond that one. So let's go try to find out what that problem is in the Excel spreadsheet and fix it. So I'll close the table. And I have saved all of the original data sources into a folder called sources. I'm organized like that. And these came from the plant label Excel spreadsheet. Yes, no, no, no. The collection one is in. Plant from plant labels. Yes, plant okay. So here we are in plant labels, and here's my collection date column, and I can see that something is a little strange about the first four values. They're they're offset from where the other ones are. Okay. You see that? Mm -hmm. So my guess, from having seen information in Excel in the past, is that some of them are formatted as dates, yeah. and some of them are not formatted as dates. Okay. Now I ask you the question, is the information in this field all as dates? Yes. So I should be able to change the entire column to be a date field? Yes, that's a date field. Okay, so I'll try to well, do that. The date that was collected in the field. Right. Mm -hmm. Let me confirm. Let me first take a slight pause to get my computer up higher because it's otherwise going to burn up. <coughs> I will look at the format for this column and see if my guess was right. Format cells. Do you remember earlier I said that you could format individual cells in a column and that was one of the drawbacks of Microsoft Excel? 
Here it is. The first four are as date fields. And the ones after that are formatted as general. So there's a difference in the, how the cells are formatted. Now, on the Microsoft Access side, it seemed to have trouble with the ones that are formatted as dates here. So what I'll do is I'll change all of them to be general. Okay. Because we know Microsoft Access understood that. So I'll just highlight the whole column except for the column header. Are there many? There are many. Okay. Format, cells, general. Okay. Now we have a mess because it has turned the dates that were really dates into what Excel stores them as internally, which is a number of days since some date in 1980 that I don't recall. So that's going to be an issue. So let's do something else. Let's format all that as text and see what happens. Nope, doesn't help. Now they're just numbers turned into text. All right, let's see if we can do it with dates. Date. 